Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kick out your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that you can have the same recycled limiting beliefs and expect a different outcome in your life. The reality is in order for us to see positive changes in our lives, we first have to take a close look at our mindset and what's truly been holding us back. Oftentimes, we keep getting the same results because we go through life with the same repetitive limiting beliefs that we've accumulated over the years. It boils down to this, the same beliefs will get you the same results. So how do we change these recycled limiting beliefs from the past? The first step is to get honest with yourself and see which beliefs you keep experiencing. For example, Maybe one of those reoccurring subconscious beliefs you experience is that you aren't talented enough to take action on your dreams, or that you aren't fully ready to do all the things you've dreamed of. When we tackle our limiting beliefs, we see them for what they truly are, self-imposed convictions that we ourselves created. We then have the power to create new beliefs that support the life we want to live. Remember, in order to get different results, you have to do something differently and it all starts with your mindset. As Mary Kay Ash quotes, don't limit yourself. Many people limit themselves to what they think they can achieve. You can go as far as your mind lets you. What you believe, remember, you can achieve. Stay tuned, coming up after the break. And for our viewers that don't know about your character Hartley on the villains of Valley View, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, so Hartley, she is a very fun and interesting character. You know, she's very kind and charismatic. She loves to help others in her community. Um, you know, she's definitely a people person and doesn't like to fib or lie. So when she meets the Maddens and, you know, has to run around doing all these crazy things with them, it, it kind of becomes a challenge for her. I feel like to to keep that secret and, and you know, um, you know, I feel like she always, sees the best in everybody endlessly, which is amazing. But you know, throughout the season, I feel like the, the Maddens and Amy really show her that, you know, not everybody always has the best of intentions. And even though you do, you know, you gotta like, not be not, not that she's naive, but she needs to like almost realize that there's some people that might be out there to get her or the Maddens. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have American actress and singer Kaden Muller Jensen, who stars in the Disney Channel series, The Villains of Valley View. Kaden, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? Of course, I'm great. You know, it's an awesome day. I'm excited to be here and talk with you. Yes, it's a beautiful day. So much to be grateful for. And I'm excited to talk to you as well. You have so many exciting things happening. but. I want to take it back to the beginning. I know you grew up on a farm um, and your parents trained horses and you're also a trained equestrian as well. So tell us about that. <laughs> you know, I grew up live like eat breathing horses. You know, I, I live on a five acre property in uh, Wellington, Florida, and we have around like 16 horses right now. So I've been surrounded by animals, especially horses my entire life. I mean. It, it was great growing up on a farm. I feel like I had like this opportunity like of having a really good childhood compared to a lot yeah, of kids yeah. to, to, to grow up on this property and like working with animals like horses. I mean, they're such like smart, majestic, amazing creatures. And, you know, when I slowly started like uh, going into the music industry, I kind of applied the horses into them too because oh, they've yeah. always been a part of my life. But um. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm in Florida right now and helping out at the barn and stuff. And it's great. I I'm, I'm really grateful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, training horses is not easy. It takes a lot of patience, discipline. I mean, similar to <laughs> acting and entertainment, right? You need to have that focus. So, sure. so l let's talk about that. Let's talk about, I know that you discovered acting. I think you were in um, The Wizard of Oz as Dorothy in school. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what kind of sparked that interest in acting? 
Um, I, I just always loved watching shows and like movies, like uh, musicals growing up. That was just always me. My mom would always have to take my phone away from me to the point because I was so obsessed with like watching movies. And I think it was just something that I always knew that I wanted to do, but didn't think it was possible until the opportunity arised. I mean, I started taking acting classes down here in Florida and the company that started that they started a school like a school of the arts so they brought me there and I actually auditioned for the for the show it was the second musical that I ever um auditioned for and I booked the lead and it was it was amazing I mean it was middle school so I was still a bit young but you know to have rehearsals every single day of the week and really start like I knew like then and there that that's what I wanted to do the excitement and the adrenaline and and I don't know just the feeling that I would get being on stage I, I knew that this was the right career path for me <laughs> wow you know that's the thing about theater every single person I talked to last week we had someone from Netflix from the Umbrella Academy and he said the same thing he's you know a full-time actor but he also does Broadway and theater and he there's just something about it, it seems, that is so thrilling. I feel like I'm getting the same feedback from every person I speak to. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know what it is. I think it's just the the adrenaline of knowing that you have this one shot and this shot only, like you've been rehearsing for months, and if you mess up, it's in front of like a bunch of people. So like the pressure is just really like, exhilarating. Is that the word that I'm looking yeah. for? But yeah, I love it. <laughs> And I know that you also love singing. Um, I heard that you found one of your sister's CDs, Christina Aguilera Reflection, <laughs> and that kind of sparked the passion of music. So tell us about that moment, that breakthrough moment. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have that like grilled into my memory of we were living in this small town, I think it's like Bedford Hills in New York. And I was in the back seat of my mom's navigator and she would always play that because that was the song that kind of taught me how to sing, I think. I mean, I, I would practice over and over and over again until I could sing that song perfectly. And I don't know, I just, Christina Aguilera, like from a young age, I always looked up to her. So, you know, I'll always have a really deep like connection to that song as well. And I actually did my first um, audition that I did for a musical called Dear Edwina. I actually sang that song for my audition and my mom cried. So Oh wow. She said it was like the most beautiful she's ever heard me sing and I was really <laughs> young, so that meant a lot to me. And you know, I feel like that kind of just you know, seeing my mom cry like that and seeing that like I could book that and people actually gave me compliments like, Wow, you're a good singer. I feel like that was like kind of pushed me like, oh, maybe I can also sing as well on top of acting, you know? I feel like acting and singing kind of just came hand in hand um, when I was younger and I realized I could do both and make it into a career. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, who doesn't like Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears, right? I grew up with them too. So <laughs> when I read that fact about you, about the that song, I was like, I mean, who didn't like that song, right? <laughs> it was so bad. I mean, I was, this is gonna sound really bad, but I was really young, like from 10 to like 13, I yeah, was yeah. obsessed with the movie <laughs> burlesque. Like I was obsessed. I would take my mom's heels. Like I remember I had this like pink flowy like skirt and I would literally like dance to like, show me how you really, probably not <laughs> for that age, but I loved it. And Circus by Britney Spears, <laughs> that was my song. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, I like those songs too, so I <laughs> I can completely relate. <laughs> and fast forward, let's talk about your role today on the Disney Channel's The Villains of Valley View. I heard that you got a call back two days after you auditioned. So what was running through your head? And tell us about that audition. So, um, oh my gosh, the audition process was actually really fast, but also really funny because I've I've been auditioning for Disney since I first started acting. I mean, I was around 13 when I did my first audition. I think it was for Andy Mack, and I actually got a call back for that, got really close. And, you know, there were so many different projects that I got super close to, and I was just like, oh, like always getting like a no or like a door shut in my face, which is fine. Like as an actress, you go through that, you know, there's going to be a lot of no's before you get that one yes. And I was, ah, I believe I was eight, about to turn 19 and I got an audition for Hartley and I was like they're not gonna want me like I'm 
so much older now. Like, I do have a baby face, but I was like, you know, I've auditioned for so much Disney. Like, they're probably not going to pick me. And my manager was like, Caden, just do it. Send it in. Like, do the best job that you can. Worst comes to worst. Like, you just don't get the part. And I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, at that time, I was just like not getting down about myself but kind of just like sad because it was like COVID time and everything like I didn't have a lot of auditions and it was really slow and I like didn't exactly have the best confidence but then I auditioned for it and kind of just really hoped that I um would, would book it and about a week later I got a call back chemistry read it was like straight away meeting the lead wow. um Isabella Papas and you know, I read with her, I prayed, I was like, please, 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 I want this job, like, it's my first audition in so long, and um, I think a week after that, I I got the call, the, sorry, <laughs> I got the call from my agents that I booked the role, and I literally fell to my knees, and I cried, it was one of the best days of my life, I mean, I don't know, I'm beyond grateful for the op opportunity that I have. <laughs> Yeah, you know what, I was just thinking about this today. Sometimes it's in the moments that you're just about to give up or you've tried your best and you keep th you're thinking like, I've done my best. I don't know if this is gonna happen. That something happens, right? <laughs> it's so funny. It's like, you never know when, you know, that's why you should always give it one more shot because you never know uh, when your next big break will be. I mean, it could be just around the corner and if you give up, you'll never know, right? <laughs> exactly. It, it, I feel like the best things always happen when you least expect it. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, for sure. And I was definitely at a point where I was like, oh, like, not down about myself, but I was just kind of questioning. I was like, oh, like, do I need to go back to, like, <laughs> do more acting class? Yeah. Something I'm doing. And and now after, after booking the role and, you know, doing the first, like, test pilot and working with everybody, it was... I don't know. I'm still kind of processing everything. Like, everybody's always asked me, like, what is it like? And I'm like there's no words like it's so exciting and i'm so happy for the opportunity and being able to work on on such like a positive environment and set like everybody was so nice and supportive and i don't know i, I really got blessed <laughs> yeah and that actually led me to my next question was you know the disney channel disney it's such a great brand so many actresses and actors got their big break from um, Ariana Grande to there's uh, I think um, for Hannah Montana <laughs> and Miley Cyrus you know they all got their big breaks on it so how yeah. has your experience been what's it been like just working with the cast it must have been <laughs> amazing it's as you can see yeah. I'm still like You're trying to grinning ear to ear <laughs> I mean it it it's so funny because when I was there working in the moment it felt like it was forever and then once it was over it was like what just happened like we just worked on the show for the past seven months and it it went by like that i mean the cast we all got so close so quick i mean we were working together five days a week um seeing each other every single day and and we just felt like family and we were always having fun on set and it was great i i mean i feel like the the chemistry that we have offset really shows on screen in the show because we all just love each other a lot and we always had so much fun i mean even the crew i mean it was my first time on on a set like that and everybody kind of just like took me under their wing and, and showed me everything that i needed to know and i asked so many questions i learned so much i mean a lot of the people that were on the crew have worked with selena gomez like on wizards of waverly place and hannah montana lab rats like some of the most iconic disney shows so like to be able to work with them was just i mean a dream come true i mean those are shows i i grew up watching and always wanted to to be on and to finally be on a disney show yeah, is just yeah. absolutely insane and and meet all these people it's i'm i'm endlessly grateful <laughs> Sorry, as you can see. No, I mean, it's amazing. Congratulations. It's a it's a great role and it's your big break. So I'm happy for you. And for our viewers that don't know about your character, Hartley, on the villains of Valley View, tell us about it. <laughs> yeah, so Hartley, she is a very fun and interesting character. You know, she's very kind and charismatic. She loves to help others in her community. Um, you know, she's definitely a people person and doesn't like to fib or lie so when she meets the maddens and 
you know, has to run around doing all these crazy things with them. It, it kind of becomes a challenge for her, I feel like, to to keep that secret and, and you know, um, you know, I feel like she always sees the best in everybody endlessly, which is amazing. But, you know, throughout the season, I feel like the, the Maddens and Amy really show her that, you know, not everybody always has the best of intentions. And even though you do, you know, you got to, like, not be not not that she's naive, but she needs to like almost realize that there's some people that might be out there to get her or the Maddens. So, you know, I feel like she also teaches the Maddens a lot throughout the season as well on how to be a good person and, you know, pretend to be a normal family. And, you know, it's it's a really great combo to see such a like crazy kind girl with such a crazy evil bad kind of family and it's a really fun dynamic and i feel like people really love that combination and love the show because of that amazing and you're also doing music i know that your song kiss kiss baby was number one on disney radio and you also have your latest uh single uh crave so tell us about that as well it's exciting <laughs> so um i mean even <laughs> with my first single kiss kiss baby hitting radio disney i mean that was another dream come true because yeah. of Disney as well. I mean, I grew up listening to the radio, radio Disney in the car. Like that's all that I let my mom play as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, to to have my song hit top three on there a couple of times, and even on Music Choice, and I mean, it's a dream come true. I mean, for for people to be able to hear my music and my message behind them. I mean, I. As a kid, I never really thought that I could have that impact on people, but when I released music and, and saw all these people like messaging me and commenting how they love these songs and you know it really speaks to them, I was just like, wow. And I just started creating more and more music and every single song that I make, you know, really comes from a personal place for me. I mean, most of the time when I've written these songs, they a situation is happening or I'm feeling an emotion that I can't really cope with and the only way for me to vent is kind of turn it into a song if that makes yeah. sense to get it out and I mean ever since I was young that's that's kind of how I, I coped with my emotions I mean I got I got bullied pretty bad as a kid and music was kind of like my only friend um, so so writing really helped me a lot and being able to create music out of that and have other people hear it. It's just, it, it's crazy to me. I mean, I love it. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have picked any other job. And, you know, I just released Crave and No Maybe. And I made those songs about two, three years ago. I mean, No Maybe was actually, I made when I was 13, which is like one of the first few songs that I made. And I mean, people loving those songs too is insane. I've had them in my archive for a really long time. and. I actually have an EP coming out in October, which I'm super excited about too, because there's plenty of more songs that have been waiting for a really long time for people to hear. And I mean, yeah, I'm just really excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I did read that in your story that, you know, you wrote music because you felt like you didn't fit in and you got bullied. So you used it kind of like therapy. You used music as inspiration to write your feelings. So I, I love that because that makes the music so much more personal and relatable for, you know, for your audience. What kind of feedback have you gotten from your fans? I mean, I remember there was this one fan who texted me even about No Maybe and was like, there was this boy that she liked for a long time. I don't know what age she was. I didn't really ask. But, you know, a lot of my songs, like, I have some songs that are coming out that aren't just about love. But, I mean, when it came to No Maybe, they were like, the, the emotion that I felt behind it, it just really connected with me because she liked this boy and he was kind of playing games with her as well, <laughs> which kind of happened with me in the same situation. And, you know, she was just, like, saying how she loved the song and how she could relate to it. And, I mean, I got a few different comments, too. Like, even, like, Crave, you know, I heard one of my friends was, like, she didn't, she almost thought of it, like, it could, I feel like with that song, like, every song you hear can be heard differently or taken differently, if that makes sense. I'm trying to find, like, the right phrase, <laughs> like, a different perspective for everybody. And when it came to Crave, one of my friends told me that, like, for crave like you know that I want you but you don't seem to care when it came to that like to me it's about like a love song but to her it could be like something like 
somebody being addicted to like alcohol or something like that so it mm-hmm. was really interesting for me to hear because I was like I I didn't hear that personally making that song but to, from somebody else's perspective to hear that they hear it differently I feel like that's really cool and also a part of art you know in general that you know even with painting or with acting you know everybody perceives it differently and yeah that was, that was really cool to hear as well Sorry, that that took a while. <laughs> no, no, I, I totally understand. I mean, you know, it depends what's happening in your own world. You kind of, it's a reflection, you know, you see yeah. the music kind of relates to your own situation, right? Even if you hear a love song, you think about your own situation. <laughs> That's why love songs are so popular and, and everyone loves them, so. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I created this platform to inspire, to uplift, and um, to showcase anything is possible. So I want to ask you, I mean, how many kids want to be on the Disney Channel or actors that, you know, want their big break? So what are some obstacles that you kind of face getting into this industry or, or even now? And how do you or how did you and how do you get through it? You know, I I take it one day at a time. Let's just say that. I mean, when I first started out in the acting industry, the one most difficult thing that I did go through was the auditioning process. I mean, yeah, I, I did around like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and it's really you know it gets difficult after a while to believe in yourself because you start to think that oh like am I not good enough am I not this and that and you kind of have to take that out of your mind like each audition that you do do the best that you can and then just put it away like in the side of your mind because if you overthink it and let it get to you it can really affect you and your performance and and that was one thing that I definitely had to work through and and figure out how to you know, not let myself get to that point. And I really, I don't know, I kind of just, as I said, like took it one day at a time, you know, try, try to push it away, distract myself with the other things that I love to do. I mean, I always say that you should surround yourself with good, positive people that, you know, love you and support and, and, and care about you. Because when you have a lot of these negative people around you, you don't really realize how much it, it can affect your life and especially your career. Mm-hmm. So me, I really had to, you know, sit back and, and reflect and see the people in my life and, you know, make sure everybody around me is positive so I can do my job correctly and not get affected by negative thoughts if that makes sense no (laughs) surrounding yourself with positive people especially because our industry is so difficult you know and it requires a lot of focus and passion and determination so you want to be around people that are uplifting you (laughs) and encouraging you right not people that are bringing you down or bringing drama or any of that so i was just going to say that i i can completely relate and i like that you said that you went to hundreds of auditions because, you know, people need to hear that. For people that are actors, they think they're going to get their big break on the first audition. I mean, it does happen sometimes, but it it's does. Very, it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, I remember I interviewed Maitri I from Never Have I Ever on Netflix, and she was saying that was one of her first auditions and she got it. So it does happen. Yeah, it does happen. But I mean, for most people, it doesn't. It, it takes hundreds of auditions. It takes a lot of no's. Um, and I think it's important for our viewers to hear that is that keep going, keep at it and eventually good things will come. So I like that you, you touch base on that. And Kaden, what else are you working on? Um, as of right now, you know, I'm, I have a lot of fun projects coming up. I don't want to spoil too much. Um, um, my EP comes out in October and, you know, I have a few other things Oh, I can't spoil it. I really wish I could say. But, you know, within this next year before Christmas time, there's going to be a lot of cool things coming up. Maybe a live performance in in Florida as well. A concert we're excited about. And, yeah, a lot of things coming with music. And on the acting side, you guys will see soon. (laughs) Very exciting. Well, Kaden, thank you so much for being on the show today. I love your energy. It's so infectious. And I know there's going to be more amazing things ahead of you. So we hope to have you back on the show with your new projects. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really happy that I, I got to speak with you about everything. And hopefully I see you soon again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much and enjoy your day. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. You can fly high